Hi, it's me, Gary, again. Um, for those of you who watched my first video, I talked a lot about looking after your hands and your fingers. Well, look at that. Yes, I've some, done some injury to my wrist. Kind of a sprain with some pain in there as well. Uh, just overused, possibly, and I managed to punch the tumble dry. No, not on purpose. It was an accident. So that didn't help either. So I'm wearing this bandage for now. But I'm going to take it off because I'm going to play some guitar in a bit. I thought I'd use uh, this session to talk about a few different things, actually. First of all, I'm using a different camera because it means I can get further away from the camera when I'm talking about guitars and playing guitars. Uh, secondly, I'm going to be playing some guitars as well. Uh, but before I do that, <clears throat> I thought I would talk about competition that I kind of mentioned at the end of the last video. Due to a change in my domestic caring responsibilities, I'm not playing as far away or as many gigs as I used to. Uh, and over the past two months, or in fact the last six weeks, I've had to turn down six gigs. Uh, places that I've played at before that won't let me back twice over the next 12 months. Uh, and it's sad for me, but it means that other people in the region can get to play those places. And I've always felt, as I mentioned before, that we're not in a competition. For those of us who have been or are gigging musicians, there are a limited number of gigs that we can all do out there. And I've found, and other people have found, who've shared this with me, that if you find a new place for a gig, or a really good place for a gig, don't keep it to yourself. They're not going to book you back every month, 12 months of the year. If you're really lucky, they'll get you back every three months, or usually every four months. So why not tell your fellow musicians about this great place to play, and put them in touch? Uh, I have spoken with several regional musicians and said, I've played here, it's really good. A, they'll enjoy you. B, you'll enjoy it. And uh, they have, both ways. And also, I've been fairly open and found that people have been open with me about the fees that you get. There is just kind of a, a limit to what a solo musician of our standard, well, my standard, can expect to get for a Friday or Saturday night somewhere in the northeast, playing not covers. Well, I do play covers, but they're not chart covers or anything like that. Songs people haven't heard before, usually. So why not share this around? If you find a new gig, yeah, go and play it. Suss it out, see what it's like. And if it's really good, first of all, make sure you get a return booking. Every three or four months is about right. And secondly, tell the rest of us musicians here in the Northeast about this great place that looks after you, with an audience that listens to what you're doing, and that pays reasonably well, the going rate, more or less. Uh, that's the end of that bit. I've got a bit more Gary's philosophy later on. Um, if you've seen me play anywhere over the past several years, uh, I do use a thumb pick, and I'm going to try and get it in focus on the camera. There. This is a Fred Kelly Speed Pick Heavy Duty. I've worked my way, like many of us have, through various plectrums, picks, finger picks, and all of that. Uh, and I found that this is the one for me. Uh, it's so much the one that I have been buying them 12 at a time off eBay. And usually when people say, oh, what's that? I'll pass one and I'll give them one of these thumb picks. Um, like all of us, I've got drawers full of plectrums and finger picks and stuff that I never use anymore. Uh, I still I actually like the items, plectrums. I love them. I just don't use them. So I might buy the odd one here and there when I'm in a music shop. And fairly recently, I ended a competition on Facebook uh, run by Fred Kelly Picks. Fred's no longer with us, but his daughter is running the company. And I was actually a winner. And as well as a package of assorted picks, which I've been sharing out around various musicians, plectrums and picks, I won this bumper pack. 24. There we are. Fred Kelly picks. I haven't opened it yet. But when I do, I'll be sharing them out amongst anybody who wants one. Uh, the reason I use a thumb pick is when I first had the first lot of lessons, I had about seven or eight lessons. I went to night school at brilliant school in Hartlepool, by a guy called George Colley, who was A, a really nice guitar player, B, a really good photographer, and C, kind of a historian around Hartlepool. And he talked about using thumb picking and syncopated beat. And that's how I started playing thumb pick, and that's what I still do, whether I'm playing acoustic or electric. So, I'll talk about this guitar, and another one, in a little while. And I've got to get it right in the... There we are. So, sink a bit of pick on. Got an E chord there. It's a 
be playing the bottom A string and the fourth string, which I've got fretted, with the second string there. So E to E. And it can give you a rhythm and a kind of a foundation for whatever else you're going to do. Alternate the bass line. Bit of hammer on. And another reason that I like to finger pick is when you're playing with a plectrum, you've only got one note to strike the strings at once. But with this, you've got all these fingers down here, which you can use for something else. Speaking to a friend that uh, just sat at night about thumb picks and thumb picking because I'd given him one of these quite some time ago. He said, I just, he just couldn't get it. Can't do it at all. You might not be able to, but give it a try and add something to your player's arsenal. Okay, um, let's talk about guitars in general, first of all. I've got several, quite a few guitars, and I've had all kinds of guitars. And, <coughs> excuse me, the thing to think about is to bond with the guitar. If you like the feel of it, and you like the play of it, the sound of it, and the looks of it, then perhaps you've got more of a chance of bonding with it and using that guitar for gigs or whatever you want to do, playing at home. Um, quite a while ago, five or six years ago, I was offered the opportunity to be endorsed by a guitar company, so I chose a bass guitar, which is great, and an acoustic guitar, which I just did not bond with. I didn't like the way it felt, and I couldn't get a decent sound out of it after spending quite a bit of money on preamps. I've got about five acoustic preamps, impulse responses and stuff like that. So I put it back in this case and went back to a previous guitar that I'd been playing for quite a while. And only four or five weeks ago, I took that guitar to a local shop to sell on commission. And more or less the same day, I got a call off a friend from the shop who said, you know that Yairi guitar that you like? This one here. Lovely wood on the back there. The guy who owns it, this one, and had it in the shop because I'd played it for ages, wants to do a deal involving a swap of guitars and a bit of money. So I did. He got my guitar and some money. And I got this K. Yari guitar, which I really like. And I'd played it a lot in the shop. So the message for that bit is, find a guitar that you bond with. It's taken me a while, and I've got several now that I've bonded with, acoustic and electric. Uh, another piece of advice something i wish i had done is a if you've got a guitar and it doesn't play right feel right or sound right first of all get a good setup there's lots of great luthiers and guitar setup guys here in the northeast a really good setup can make a heck of a difference to a guitar if you had one done you'll know and uh, make it almost like a different guitar but the thing that i wish i had done i'm too old to learn it now is how to do a setup myself how to raise and lower the action, which is easier on an electric guitar than on an acoustic, because you've got to do stuff with the bridge and under there. How to adjust the truss rod and all of that. I've never done any of that. I do have a few people that I go to, and I'm very grateful for them. Um, but if you can learn those skills, A, you'll save yourself some money, you'll save yourself some time, and also you'll build a better relationship with the guitars that you work on, in my thoughts, anyway. Um, guitars.
Yes, it's another key, I remember it's a different one. Quite a few years ago, I had a guest come into the Blue Show uh, and play live in the studio. And he had a Kayari parlor body guitar, quite a small body guitar. He still has it because I saw him in January playing it. Um, and I thought to myself, bye, that's a lovely guitar. I had a play of it. And at the back of my mind, I thought, Kayari, they're good guitars. Keep your eyes open for them. Well, my local music shop, which some of you will know where it is, uh, had this guitar in. Kayari. Uh, and I didn't know anything else about it at that time, apart from the fact it has a pickup fitted. Fisherman Rare F Plus, which means it's got a microphone inside as well. It's got lovely wood on the sides and the back. Nice cutaway. Transparent cross plate, there is one there. But I didn't know anything else about the guitar except I really liked it. So I sent them a message, I'm coming over in the morning. So I went over, played it for about an hour, plugged it into an amplifier, to see what it sounded like. Got somebody else who was in the shop to play it. A good tip, if you've got your eye on a guitar, particularly an acoustic, get somebody else to play it while you walk around the shop and see what it sounds like. So, a deal was done and I did some research and came home with this guitar. And it turns out, it's one of only 12 that there are in the world. It's an Isaac Guillory signature guitar, handmade in Japan by K. Yairi. Uh, and I believe on the label inside, you won't be able to see it, it's a signature that is not only Kayari, but Isaac Gilrys too. Uh, and for now, this is the one. Uh, I've bonded with it, I've played with it quite a while over the next, over the past 12 months or so, more probably. And I did tune it up as well. It's a lovely guitar. Uh, but I have other guitars that were cheaper than this in the other room, and I'll get to them in the next video, possibly, that I've also bonded with. And uh, advice from a music shop owner friend of mine, which he passes on to people who come in and say, oh, well, that's got a strange name. I've never heard of them. Don't worry about the name that's on the headstock. Pick up the guitar, play it. If it feels right to you and it sounds right to you, it doesn't matter whether it's a £150 guitar or £1,500 guitar. It might be just the one for you, and then you'll bond with it, obviously. Um, I'm not going to go on much longer, this is quite a long video, but... Sorry, I will finish with Gary's thought of the day. I know. Um, it's something that I've applied quite successfully over the past 20 years or so, but it took me quite a while to learn this thing. Uh, and here it is. If you have a question, that you want to ask somebody and you don't ask that question, the answer will always be no. This applies to life, not just music. However, if you are quite prepared as a big person, grown up, to take no for an answer without getting the huff, storming off or anything else, ask the question. Because if you don't ask it, the answer is no. If you do ask the question, the answer might be yes. And it's been yes for me for quite a few different things. Uh, for, <laughs> something quite humorous, but it's worked for me. When you see an artist build, uh, headliner is Billy Bloggs Blues Band, uh, and support TBC, which means to be confirmed. I am in the habit of messaging people saying, oh, TBC, that's my new stage name. And more than once, probably three or four times, <laughs> the promoters got back to me and said, oh, do you want this support gig? Yes, it's worked that way. Uh, if they'd said no, I would have said, that's fine. Secondly, uh, it got me to sing, share the same microphone as Barry Melton. Now, you might not know who he is, but he is the fish of Country Joe and the Fish. I've been playing at a gig that he was playing at, fantastic gig, and I asked his band leader, can I get up and sing a bit? And he said, yes. If I hadn't asked, I would have sat in the rain with anybody else and enjoyed the gig. 
He said yes. So I got up and was sharing a microphone with Barry Melton. Just think, of, you know, Barry Melton was at Woodstock playing with Country Joe and the Fish. And here's me on stage sharing a microphone with him, simply because I asked the question. One other way that this has helped me is uh, if you go to somebody's house or, yeah, or somebody's house, and they have a random guitar lying around, uh, and they oh, do you play that? No, can I play it? Yeah. First of all, can I play it? Yes, you do. Uh, do you want the guitar? They, you ask them. Not really. The next question is, obviously, can I have it? Yes. So I've come away with a couple of different guitars like that. There was one more bit of stupid advice I was going to give you. But, uh, oh yes, here it is. And I will stop real soon. Uh, enjoy every now and again getting outside of your comfort zone musically I'm meaning uh, play some different kind of music to that which you normally play with some different people possibly people you've never played with before there's some great new jam nights around the region you know who I'm talking about uh, and a while ago six, oh no, 12 years ago yeah I got a message off the manager of a new well not a new but a fairly unknown female singer Whose, whose music I'd been playing on my radio show, and he said to me, you know all the guitar players in the North East, um, can you recommend somebody to play acoustic guitar when my singer headlines Durham Blues Festival on the acoustic stage? And I immediately thought of all the other people that I know in the North East who play guitar. And eventually, I thought, well, hang on a minute, I could do this. Uh, so I sent the manager some videos of what I do. He said, uh, yeah, great, you've got the job. Uh, which was really good for me, except it pushed me way out of my comfort zone because there were some songs there that had more than three chords, seven, eight chords and key changes and all kinds of stuff like that. So I did my homework, stressed like hell about it, uh, but did the gig and it was great and it led me on to other things too. So when you can, step outside of your comfort zone, play different music with somebody else, come and play it with me somewhere. Right, that's enough for now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed something of this. If not, let me know. And if you have, put something in the comments. I'm glad you all commented on the last video I put about looking after your hands. I wish I'd looked after mine. Um, take care and I will hopefully see you somewhere in the northeast and I'll do another video in a couple of days. Bye.